Hello art lovers, welcome back to the studio. It's my first interview in a while and I've got a great uh, artist right here to interview, a new one in the gallery. His name is David Grudgens and welcome to the gallery, David. Um, Thank you. Gonna grill you on your style and all the things that you do and obviously you're a welded steampunk artist. How did you even get into doing this? Uh, what's your background? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, have a, I have an uncle who did some metal sculpture and it kind of made me think about the idea that maybe I would do that someday and uh, a big part of my background is in auto repair so I was a mechanic and then I, I ran an auto repair shop for a number of years and so we'd have all these old pieces of metal and car parts laying around that the owner would let me uh, take some home and, and I started just uh, experimenting with them and making things out of them and that's kind of where it all started. How wild and you've yeah. only been doing this a few years right? Yeah I mean I I had played around with welding maybe back in like 2014, 2015, but then uh, I moved and I didn't really have an area set up to work. So it was about 2018 when I really kind of dove back into it and started doing more of it. Wild. Yeah. What was the first piece you ever made? It's hard to say. So, I mean, I, I have a, I think I have a couple. I made a little, the thing that really made me, I made this little bird for my mom for Christmas and it was like probably made out of seven pieces of metal <laughs> nice and then a friend of mine said hey that's really cool can you make me something i made him i think it was a snow it was a snowmobile a snowmobile out of metal and then then i just started playing more after that so well you're obviously big into animals and i know you're a hunter and you kind of model a lot of things after obviously things you're interested in and hunt <laughs> yeah i've seen the mallards and uh, of course deer and We've got some amazing pieces, that, like the bugs. Where did those come from? I don't know. How did I get it started on? I mean, we have. I live in Wisconsin, and there's a lot of insects. And yeah, they're just they're they're really unique. They're intricate. There's so many pieces to them, and uh, you know, a lot of people like spiders. A lot of people are afraid of bugs, but sure. it's kind of a neat way to <clears throat> take something that someone wouldn't normally be interested in, but then see it in a different medium, and like maybe. You know, that's pique, not so scary. Yeah, yeah. pique their curiosity a little bit, or maybe make them not so worried about the actual real thing. Sure, yeah, that's cool. So, do you like building smaller works or larger works better? I'm kind of impatient. Yeah. And so, big drawn out projects for me are hard, aren't, aren't really my thing. So, um, I like things I get done in like a week or two. That's nice. kind of my sweet spot. Yeah. Um, but I am working on making my studio larger now so I can have maybe a couple big pieces you know, going on in the background where I don't have to worry about getting it done to make room for the next piece. Um, so it's just a good balance. It's easy to ship small things in yeah. places. So, Well, as my customers all know, we ship worldwide. And if you get a chance to come into the gallery and see Dave's work, I highly recommend it. They're phenomenal. The intricacies in them are and the details are really mind-blowing to me. I, I'm always amazed by how somebody can take an inanimate piece of something and make it into an animated looking piece. Yeah. You know, some of your works articulate, um, you just have to see, and we're gonna be heading into the gallery uh, to look at some of your work and, and talk about the pieces in just a minute. Um, but the show will be running through probably the new year and you can always catch the work online at ianrussellart.com. And um, Dave, we'll go into the gallery and we'll continue the interview there. How's that? That sounds great. All right, see you guys in a minute. All right, thanks. Hey, we're back in the gallery with David Grunches. And uh, these are two of his most amazing pieces. I, I love everything you do. It's really phenomenal. And when you get into like looking at what you use and how you assemble it and the three-dimensional anatomy that you pull off, it always blows my mind. What is in some of these? I mean, there's a lot of different components. So everything is found steel objects. Nothing's new. It's all, it's all recycled material. So the birds specifically, um, I use a lot of found objects. Like we've got you know, bicycle sprockets, bearings, some silverware, just some scrap steel car parts. But then all these flat pieces, these are just leftover scraps I get from a machine shop in town. Wow. And so I'll shear them into just kind of triangular geometric shapes and they, they lend themselves really well to feathers. And I can, I can twist them and shape them and then 
Um, so these are the same pieces on these two birds, but then these are heated with a torch to get that blue color. I don't paint anything. So I tried to just use the natural colors of the metal. And so what typically, like hour-wise, do you have in something like either of these pieces? Just out of curiosity. You know, so that's a, that's a good question. I don't, I don't. You don't keep track. Well, I do. I do keep track. Actually, do you? I'm I'm very analytical. That way. <laughs> in the auto world, like I kept track of everything. So sure. I, have a, I have spreadsheets. Like it's kind of crazy. That's but, funny. <laughs> I would not have thought that. Most owners are like, I don't know, it took me like 10 hours. Yeah. You know, it took them 40. You, you know. know <laughs> but I don't, what I don't keep track of is like, how long did it take to get the pieces and organize them and find oh, them? Oh, right. Take that piece of farm machinery apart that that was on and drive to the other side of Wisconsin to get the stuff. Like, that's right. all the stuff that doesn't really count. So, like, you know, that's construction true. wise, construction wise, like these would have both been done in, in less than a week. Okay. Um, Wow. You know, it just depends. Like, I might be working on a couple at a time, and if, if I do a few of the same at the same time, it'll be a little quicker. Right. Um, so do you, when you have everything kind of mapped out of what you're going to do, I'm going to do a raven, do you collect all the pieces that you, you think you're going to use, or do you build an armature and then kind of work off of that and fill in? Kind of hard. So now that I've done ravens, and I do a lot of them, um, I will start collecting the pieces that I need for... Um, for a raven. So I'll start with the head and I'll get a bunch of ball bearings. These are off of a uh, old sickle mower that goes behind like a horse drawn. I got a bunch of those. Wow. And so I'll find all those pieces, I'll kind of lay them out, and I'll get the main, you know, the main pieces and then from there. Um, then I just, each one is different. Very cool. So, very cool. Well, let's move over and look at a couple other works of yours. The audience is going to want to see them all. Uh, come in now, you know, because you're going to want to see these, believe me. All right, let's go over that way. Thanks. Awesome. Back with another one of your pieces, the mule deer. Yeah, definitely one of both of our favorites. Yeah, for probably sure. one of my favorites I've ever done yet. Yeah. So life size. It doesn't look like. It, I mean, it looks like it weighs a ton, but it only weighs like fifty or sixty pounds. Yeah. I'm I'm amazed. So tell me a bit about what's in this and, and how you, you came about putting this one together. Well, plus your big hunter, as we talked about. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah. So I mean, I got a couple. Uh, I got a couple of these as a guide at home to kind of go off of, but anything I do on the wall, I'm, I'm pretty cautious about getting it too heavy because um, I may not be there to help mount it, and I don't want a lot of weight on it. So this has a lot of really thin material in it to keep the weight down that presents some challenges, but it also kind of opened up some new opportunities. So like this this piece was really cool. This was an old shovel, and I think someone painted it once and then continued using it, and so it had this really cool patina where the paint was kind of scraped off, and mule deer, as they get older, they'll get this like white chest, and the top of their, the, the bridge on their nose will get all white with wow. age. Very so, cool. you know, focusing in on colors to really match the colors of the animal was a big focus on this one. Well, we sure appreciate you coming all the way from Wisconsin for this and yeah. bringing your beautiful art. The work is going to be available all the way through the new year and probably hopefully into uh, 2025. So come on in, check out the works. We're here tonight till 8 o'clock. And uh, obviously this is going on our YouTube, so you'll probably be missing this. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but still come in and look at it. Ian Russell signing off. I'll see you guys soon.